Good morning, Kevon. Good morning. Good morning, Danny. Good morning, Rabbi. Good morning. Excuse me about that echo. But I know it's fine. Yeah. When, when, when I'm on, yeah. it turns down the sound of that. When you're speaking, mm -hmm. what if you're asking a question while I'm teaching? teaching? It, it catches. The only echo you're hearing is because you're hearing my. Right now, so it's a little bit reverberation. But I just I put to find completely off audio. And when I spoke, my I, I just speak loud enough so that one picks you up. I just can't audio. Is, it on, uh, is yours on mute? No. Kayvon, if I speak right now, can you hear me clearly? Yes, I can. Fine. We can do that. You don't want to just so sit here. Well, then, then, yeah. You don't want to just sit here? Oh, no, wait, right, wait, you teach, you just go sit there. All right, the camera, mic. Set up. Okay, whatever you like. Okay, you ready to go? Um, good morning, Chavra. Morning, good morning. Good morning. First of all, that good morning is needed before we start. Oh, no, it's 45 days. Okay. Nothing more than intro? No, good. Hi, right, good morning, guys. Can you hear me clearly? Yes. All right, go ahead. We're starting today with Herod Bays of Halachai's Chomai Tumata and some fun stuff. So here we go. Halacha Allah. Mitzvah is the same in our day with the Hashkis and Chomai Tukhidim's money. It's a positive mitzvah from the Torah. In order to, to destroy the chametz before the time of the Isser of Achila, Shenemar, as it says, I am a Rishon Tashkisus Ami Batechna. On the first day, you should destroy the unleavened bread from your houses. So, like, it's learned out that this Rishon that it says in the Pasuk is referring to actually. The 14th of Nisan. The Raya Dabar and the proof to this is a Mashiach Kasavat Tayra Lay Sishkata Chomet Dam Zibchi. It says in the Prophet in Shmites that you should not sacrifice uh, the, the, the uh, you should not sacrifice the blood of your offering while you have Chomet. It's Kulayra Lay Sishkata Apesa La Chomet Kai. You should not chef the carbon pesa while you still have Chomet around, and we all know that the time for the slaughtering of the Karim Pesach is on the 14th after Chatzais. So, what does it refer to when it says that you have to destroy the Chomet? You should nullify the chametz from your heart. The yachshir oisay to offer should be considered like dust. The yasim belipoi she'en l'shuze chametz kha, and it should be considered in your heart as if there's no chametz at all in your shus. The shekol chametz shaber shusei haruhu to offer, and anything that would be in your any chametz that would be in your domain is like dust. Ukedaber she'en bay tzera kha, and it's like something that has. No value, it's insignificant completely. Halacha Gibel. And it's a rabbinic uh, mitzvah. To, according to the sages, it's a mitzvah to search for the chametz in all the hidden places and the holes in your house. And to um, search it out and to remove it from anywhere in your uh, in your area. And also, additionally, it's it's with the that you should do a bikika, a search, 
and to destroy the Chomets at night, Mitchilas Leil Arba Osa, at the beginning of the night of the 14th, the Ur Haner, by the light of a candle, the Pesha Laila, called Om Musuyan Bivateim. Why? Because Dafya at night, that's when everybody's at home. The Ur Haner, and specifically, we say that the light of the candle, Yaf Lebedika, it's uh, ideal for this uh, searching. The Ain Koibim Midrash Vesayim Shlaishasa, and you should not make a shear at the end of the 13th, because then you're not going to be home on time for B'dikas Chameh. The Chain HaChacham L'Yas L'Likrei the A's Zuru, and also a, if you're a Tanu Chacham, you should not start learning at this time on uh, on on the evening of the 13th. Shema Yimashe Yimane Mebidika Metchil Zmana, because you might get too involved in your learning, and you'll end up delaying or, and you won't be doing the, the Pidika at the, at the beginning of the time when you're supposed to do it. All right, Halach Adal. Ain't by the Leila or Alamana. You should not search, not by the light of the moon. Leila or Hama, nor by the light of the sun. Leila or Havuka, nor by the light of a torch. Elo or Haner, specifically, you should use the light of a candle or, as Rabbi Tavra says, a flashlight. With holes and hidden places, with his cracks and crevices. But like a porch that's out in the open where there's plenty of light, you can see everything there in Badkal. Arachama diet. If you use the light of the sun in such a situation, then you're fine. And something that's in the middle of your courtyard, any sort of vidika, you don't have to do search at all. Why? There's plenty of birds. If there was bread or crumbs that was left in the courtyard, the birds are getting to it. You don't have to worry about it, says the Rambam. Say you have a, a thick wall. And it's between your house and your friend's house. You guys have lived in like these uh, townhome styles. And there's a hole in the wall connecting your house to his house. So what does he say? You, on your side, you stick your hand in as far as it reaches. And you do bedika. The other guy, he reaches his hand in as far as it will go. And he, and he searches about Shar, Kabat, and Levi. And anything else, you know, that's, let's say, in between. I don't know how wide this wall is, but obviously it's a very wide wall. You reach it as far as you can get. You take yours or you search it out. Same thing for the other side. And anything that's not covered by the two arm lengths, you just move it in your heart. Avachar shipping, Yisrola Hakim. Rambam says that in a similar situation where you're sharing this choir, this uh, deep wall crevice, between uh, your residence and that of a non-Jew, anybody that clouds says, don't start sticking your arm into the Pika. Why? Less the non-Jew think that you're doing some sort of uh, witchcraft and you're trying to damage him. Hello, Nevada, the Libra Vidaya. Ramam says, in that case, just to Bittal, and that would be sufficient. Here's kind of like a catch-all statement that any place where you do not bring comments in Sarah Pradika, you do not need to search it at all. So, you know, for all of those people who have big homes and they have the areas where you're never allowed to bring food, so it seems according to the Rambam, you wouldn't have to do Pradika in those places. Aloha. Unless you have well, children. Yeah, yeah, we're getting there. <laughs> Aloha. Well. Oh, actually, it's, it says that on the bottom. That's right. Thank you, Rabbi Mendel. So if you do have kids that would possibly take food and shut all in the house, where it's not, in not those hard. cases, you have to be concerned you have to search those places too. All right. Halacha ba. Chayri ha-bayas ha-tachtayin ba-liyayin ha-gaga yatsas. If you have upper and lower holes in the wall of the house, or you have the roof of a valley, the refes ha-bakar, or a cow stall. The lulin is a chicken coop. Um, Masbein is a hayloft. The storehouses where you store wine or you store oil. These are not places that you would normally ever go 
in the middle of a meal, who based dog in the dialogue in the place where you store the big fish, you do not need to do bigas chametz there at all. Ella in Cain, Hitler's land chametz. Unless you know that chametz was brought into one of those places. But if you have, let's say, a storage room where you keep your beer, where you keep your wine, and these are places where in the middle of the meal you would typically you finish your bottle of wine, you say, uh, Kain, go get some more wine from the, from the storeroom. Go get some more oil from the storeroom. In that case, if this is a place where in the middle of the meal, you're going to go to replenish uh, uh, for the meal. So there, we'll place a mela, the place where you uh, store, store your salt, we'll place a shayla, the place where you store your candle, we'll place dog and tannin, where you keep your small fish alaf, as Rabbi Zayans calls them, we'll place a eitzim, and uh, the, 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 the woodshed, we'll place murias, where you keep your fish grind, and uh, the middle holes of the wall, so you don't store stuff in the low holes or the top holes, but the middle holes, which are very convenient, um, typically you would store stuff. So all these places, they require inspection. Because, you know, uh, uh, the, the standard position is that there's probably chametz that was brought into these places. And this is like this is the other side of that. If you know for sure that chametz was not brought in there, any sort of predika. So just like Rambam said, first a list of places that you don't need to check. However, if you know that chametz was brought there, you do have to check. Similar with these, some you would have to check. But if you know for sure chametz wasn't brought in, then you don't have to check. When searching a wine cellar, so he's telling you that when you do have to search a wine cellar, and it's a fat picture of a wine cellar filled with barrels of wine, and they're stacked, you know, I don't know, several high and several deep. So he says in this case, so you have to only search the two outer rows, which is this is the highest row and the one below it. So I, I, I don't remember, I remember learning this in the Gemara, and I don't remember clearly if it's, if it's the top two, one and two, which would be a total of four rows, or if it's just the front row, the top two. I'm not sure, but whatever. There's a limit. The point is you don't have to search the entire uh, storehouse. You just need to do the outer amount. And if there's no chametz there, then you're safe to assume that there's no chametz in the rest of it. Halacha zayin. And this is the beginning. We're going to get into the whole idea of chametz being dragged places when you have to be worried about when you don't have to worry about it. So says the Rambam that you don't have to suspect that maybe a weasel dragged chametz from one place uh, uh, to a place where normally you don't bring a chametz. So like all these places that the Rambam just mentioned where he says, you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to sit there and say, hey, maybe a weasel hopped in chametz and brought it into the, 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 the wine cellar or the chicken coop or these type of places. Why should he not wish me by the bias that if we have to suspect that chametz was taken from house to house, then not wish me ear the ear, you're going to have to suspect it was taken from city to city, the aim of the site. There will never be an end to the searching, because you're always gonna have to worry, well, oh, maybe a mouse came, you know, you can even say, I searched my house. Okay, now it's clean, right? Oh, maybe a holder came and, and brought whatever. Okay, so the rabbi says, you don't have to go that uh, to that extent. But the Arba Asar, if you search, you do your vidika on the lamb of Arba Asar, and yeah, Asar Khalid, he had 10 loaves of bread, and then he finds that in the morning, he finds there's only nine. So now, she has to suspect that one of them was taken by some sort of animal. But Sarah lived by Panashia. Now he has to, he has to uh, do a, a bedika all over again. In this case, there's no question that it was hot by a weasel or by a mouse. All right, halach ches, the im achbar, she if a person saw a mouse enter the house with chametz in its mouth, so, so the house he knows 
is in the cheskas of there's no chametz there. And he sees a mouse take chametz into the house in its mouth. So Tzara could be pamshtia. Now he has to do an abedika. Aka isha matzah beirun the amzabaya is. And Rav says, even though you find some crumbs, let's say, let's say you find crumbs on the floor of the entryway, so you might eat yourself up. The stomach he ate the the chametz, and this is the crumbs. I'll clean it up, and I'm good to go. Ain't oimrim kvar achal isha hapat yamakam azet yamakam zev harei happy room. We don't say that he ate the entire chametz that was in its mouth, and this is just the crumbs that was left over. We have to suspect that maybe the mouse took the chametz that was in its mouth and deposited it on a window or in a you know hole somewhere, which, which is a problem. So you have to go and find it. And these crumbs were actually. Leftover from some other comments that it slept out over there. So there was uh, some sort of switcheroo there. So that's why you have to actually, the crumbs does not exempt you from searching the entire house. If you don't find anything, you have to search the entire house. However, it says if you did find the shtikl comments that you thought that you saw the mouse carrying in, then now you're good. You don't. So Rambam saying, if you saw the the mouse carrying chametz, you saw crumbs, but not the piece of chametz. You have to search the whole house because you can't assume that those crumbs are from that piece of chametz. However, if you talk to find that piece of chametz, you could take it out and you're good. You don't have to continue searching the rest of the house. Halacha test. If you see a child that enters shkoya keva, love the pictures. If you see the, the, the <laughs> if you see a child uh, uh, enter the house, that's this is a, a house that's already been done, but you already did the deeper. So you know it, it has the chazaka that it's clean, there's no chametz in it. And in his hand is a kikar of chametz, right? It's got a nice, uh, nice short bakery chametz cake. And then there's after of a matzo peru, and you go in after him, and then you see crumbs. So unlike the case that we just said, the mouse or the in this case, in it's our bedika. You don't have to do a bedika on the whole house. The stam chazak of a child is he's going in with a delicious cake, he's gonna go and eat the cake. And the ilah pirush enough the men of shasakila. And these are the crumbs that would have fallen from the child while he was eating. The further the ace achilose, the way of a child to eat is to eat and make a shtickle mess. As a crumbs, as uh, any of us who are parents. We know that children, this is what they do. Some adults also, no names mentioned. But it's not the way, in general, of a mouse to make a, a I don't know. I'm going to defer to the Rambam here, but I think I, I've seen some messes that mice make also, but whatever. He's saying that, in general, the difference between a child and a mouse, a child makes a mess with crumbs, whereas mice do not. So if you go in there and you don't find not the cake, you don't find the crumbs, you got to search because now you're worried that maybe the kid put the cake somewhere in the house. Halacha test. Good. All right. Uh, Halacha yud. Here's where it gets, gets, starts to get really good, guys. Imagine you had nine piles of matzah and one pile of chametz. And this is talking about outside of the house, I believe. You saw a mouse take something from one of these piles. You don't know if it was from the nine matzah piles or if it was from the one chametz pile. The Nicholas the vice project. It went into the searched house. So uh, <clears throat> the house was clean. Now the mouse went in with something in its mouth. You don't know if it's chametz. You don't know if it's matzah. You have to do a search. You cannot assume that even though the majority of the piles on the outside were all matzah, that therefore it also took from matzah. No, you have to do a search. Why, the Ramam says? That anything that is established, you have to say that it's a 50-50. And this concept is going to be further explained, further explained by Rabbi Mendel, Yashikayach, and I'm out. Shkoyach. Shkoyach. So just to explain the, the, the concept that uh, Rabbi Danny just, just taught. So the classic scenario that the Gemara gives is, let's say 
Um, a person lives in a city where there are nine stores where they sell kosher meat, and there's one store where they sell non-kosher meat. So the scenario that's brought is, let's say a person walks into a store, he buys a piece of meat, he leaves the store, there's no marking on this piece of meat, and he doesn't know, did I buy the meat from a kosher store? Is it kosher or is it not kosher? So the rule is, it's a gzera sakasov, there isn't a logic given to it, that whenever the doubt has to do with something that's kavua, something like a store, so we view every store as maybe it's the kosher one, maybe it's the not kosher one. We cannot combine all of the nine kosher stores and say, well, being that my dirty are kosher, so I'm going to assume that the piece of meat is kosher. No, being that there's a set store called kavua, Every one of these 10 stores has 50-50 doubt. Maybe it's the kosher one, maybe it's the not kosher one, and therefore the meat that I have, I'm not allowed to eat. Now, however, what if my doubt is not with a kavua? Like, for example, let's say the Gemara says, I find a piece of meat on the street. It's not that I have a doubt which store I walked into, which is kavua. I have a piece of meat, which can, could have come from anywhere. So that's where I say that being that I found a piece of meat, then there's nine stores that are kosher. One of them are not kosher. I can rely on majority and I can say that this movable piece of meat comes from the majority. We don't have to say So in the scenario of halacha yod, where the example was that there was nine piles of matzah, one pile of chametz, and we know that a mouse for sure took food from one of those piles like you went into the store it's like you, like you exactly you're going into the store so then it's a 50 50 and if you went into a house that already did with the guest comments you have to research again we're now going to learn how lucky you is going to have five cases the last case is going to be the reverse let's say you have these 10 piles and food gets moved from one of these piles away from the piles it's like finding equivalent the piece of meat in the middle of the street and then the mouse comes and takes it and goes into the house that's what we're going to say. It's not called Kavua. And therefore, we're going to assume it came from the matzah. And you don't have to recheck the house. Okay. So, Allah, you'd all have five cases. Case number one is if, let's say, you have two homes. One of them was checked. One of them was not checked. And let's say you have two piles. One of them is chametz and one of them is matzah. And you have two mice. Each one takes food from one of these piles. And they enter into both of these homes. So Shnei Burim, two piles, Echad Chamas, Echad Mata. Shnei Batim, two houses, Echad Baduk, Bechad Shaini Baduk, and then Ubo Shnei Achbarim, two mice come, Zen not al Chamas, Vizen not al Mata. And the, what's the what's the suffix? Enya dua le eze bias nichnas zeshen not al chametz. We don't know which house did the mice that took the chametz. Which one did it enter into? That's scenario number one. So here the doubt is like this. Each one of those two homes has, um, you can say that maybe this is the home that matzah entered into. There is a possibility that this home for sure doesn't need any type of bedika, okay? Because one of them took matzah and maybe it entered into the already checked home. So that's scenario number one. Scenario number two, let's say you have two homes that were checked. Here you only have one pile of chametz. And a mouse came and it took food from this pile. And again, you don't know where it went into. Once again, here, the doubt, every time you have a doubt, there is a full possibility that it, it won't need another bedika at all. Even though when you put both of them together, one of them for sure needs to be rechecked because chametz entered into it. But being that each one on its own maybe it doesn't need any type of bedika at all. We're going to be lenient, as we'll see at the end of the halacha. Scenario number three. Or, let's say you, you knew that it entered into one of them, and you know which one it went into. And you went after the mouse into the home, and you checked, and you didn't find anything. So again, the question is, can we assume that if you went in and checked, and there was nothing there, that the mouse ate the chametz that it brought in, or maybe it hit it somewhere and you have to check again. But there's a chance that, that the chametz is no longer there because you checked and there was nothing there. Scenario number four. Let's say you went in after the mouse and you actually found a loaf of bread. What's the doubt? Is this the loaf of bread that the mouse brought in? Or maybe the mouse brought in a different loaf and he hit it somewhere and this is something else. And final scenario, you teach it to board. Let's say there was nine piles of matzah and one pile of chametz, and upeyash kikar mehen, a loaf of bread 
was removed from them. Again, this kikar is, again, doesn't for sure mean chametz. It's either from the matzah or the chametz. And then and a mouse came and it took this loaf that was already separated from this pile. And then it went into this searched home. Bechal Elu in all these five cases, you don't have to check again. Shein kan kavua because in this last scenario it's not kavua. And similarly, in all of the previous four cases, the doubt is not about the the piles from which it took. The doubt is placed on the homes. And being that in all of those cases, there's a full possibility that the home for sure does not need to get rechecked, so we can rely on that to not have to check it again. There was always a suffix where there was a chance that it's not there. Halacha yud base. This is going to have three scenarios. Scenario number one. Let's say he niyacha chometz bezav yizu. Someone placed chometz in one corner in their homes. And then umetzoi bezav yisachar. He finds bread in another corner. Do we assume it's that same bread that was in the first corner? Or maybe it's a different loaf of bread and you need to check again. Scenario number two. O yishay yatesha chalis hu matzah eser. Or someone left nine loaves of bread and now they found 10. The question is, is this the same original nine with one more added? Or is it maybe the first original nine is somewhere else in the home? You need to check. And this is another 10 loaves. Scenario three. Or a mouse came and it took the chametz. And the doubt is, did it enter into this home or did it not enter? And again, the Magid Mishnah points out that in this third case, you have, you only have one home and this home has a real suffix. Did it enter or did it not? It's not like when I had two homes and one of them, the mouse did not enter into or the mouse with the matzah entered into. So I for sure have a case where there's no badika that needs to get done. Here, there's only one home with a 50-50 chance. There's a real suffix. And therefore, in all of these cases, in all these cases, you do have to make another badika's chametz. Halacha yud gimel. If a mouse entered a home and he had bread inside of, inside of its mouth, and then you saw that you saw that a mouse left and he had bread in his mouth. Do we assume that that's the same loaf of bread that it entered into, or did he leave that inside of the home and he brought out another loaf of bread? So we say, it's the same loaf, the same mouse, the same bread as what came in, and it's the same one that left. And you don't have to recheck. But what were to happen if the first mouse that you saw entering was shocker, was dark, and physician, you have to, then the mouse that you saw leaving was love and was white. So then Sarah leave that you have to check because we can see that it's two different mice. And the first mouse that came, went in with its bread didn't come out. And now there's bread inside your home that you have to recheck. Next scenario. What happens if Nichnas Akbar Vikikar Bipiv? What happens if a mouse entered into your home that was already checked and he has a loaf of bread in its mouth? And then a weasel leaves and it has bread in its mouth. So being that it's different animals, it was a mice and then a weasel left. We don't assume that the weasel is leaving with the bread from the mice. We assume that he's coming out with another loaf of bread. So it's hard to leave the gap to check again. But what were to happen if a mice enters and a weasel, a mouse enters and a weasel comes out and the weasel has in its mouth, not just a loaf of bread, it has in its mouth, both a mouse and in the mouth of the mouse is a loaf of bread. So then we can assume that it's taking out the original mouse. If a weasel left the Akbar, the Kikar, the Pio, and it has both the Akbar and the bread, it's the same loaf of bread. Okay, next, what were to happen if someone has a snake entered into his home and it went into a hole and it had bread in its mouth. So you don't have to bring a snake charmer, someone who's able to take the snake out of its hole to remove it and to get the bread out. Meaning when a person, the chiyuv of bedikas chametz doesn't require a person to spend money. And in order to hire the schari, you'd have to spend money. We don't go that far. That's what it means? That's what it means. Thing? Yes, it's a money thing. Very good. Halacha yur dalit. Kezayis chametz bishmei kur. If someone has a kezayis of chametz, that's in the top of a beam in his home. So the question is, being that it's out of reach, is it enough for me just to do bittol? Or do I have to actually bring it down and do bedika and get rid of it? So we say, mechai bin oist lahavi suvom we require him to bring a ladder and to bring it down because there's a chance that it might fall. 
and he's going to come to eat it. So to prevent that, we tell him that he has to get it down before Pesach. Next, if someone had chametz inside of a pit, so here we don't require him to go down and take it out. Because here there's no chance it's going to fall into your home because it's down in a pit. Rather, he can nullify it in his heart. And that is enough. He can just rely on the chiv benatari of tashpisa, which like, which like we learned by Rab Danny is just bitter. And some say that like underneath your refrigerator is like in a pit. Right? Oh. You would never access it or whatever. So then the, that, you don't have to go crazy. You know, like uh, Rabbi Calvin used to always say that people take Pesach clean and they turn to spring clean. You know what I mean? Yeah. But actual Pesach clean, there's no obligation to start digging underneath and like removing things that would never be removed in order to get there because that's like it's in the pit. It's like it's in the pit. There's no shasha, you're going to get right. it. Very right. good. Right. Okay. Halacha tez vav. Now we're going to speak about a new scenario. Let's say someone takes chametz, but they repurpose that food for something else. For example, kipas se'ar. Someone has a pile of yeast. that they designated that pile for sitting, not for eating. So it depends. If they smear its surface with cement, so then it's nullified from yeast and you're allowed to keep it. Or let's say you have a kehareb. If you have dough that you're using for cracks of a kneading bowl, so the Ramam says like this: that if there's enough dough that you have a kazais in one look in one spot, then chayv levar. It's not going to be bottle to the areva. It's still going to have the status of chametz, and you're going to have to destroy it. But the imlav, if it's less than a kazais. Then ima you also the chazik by shivir hareiba. If the dough was there to strengthen that which was broken um, in this kneading bowl, or to close a hole, so then bottle the It becomes bottle to the kneading dough to the kneading bowl, and you can keep it. You don't have to get rid of it. But if even if it's less than a kazayis, but it wasn't there to strengthen the bowl or to close the hole, then chayv lavar you have to destroy it. Next case. Now, we said that the, what will define whether you can keep it or not is, is it less than a kazais or not? So what happens is, let's say you have two halves of a kazais in two parts of this kneading bowl, and you have one string of dough connecting these two halves. So do we consider it like one kazais or two? So it depends. Ryan, we see that if you were to pick it up just from the string that's connecting them, both halves would be lifted up. Then they're combined, then chayav and lavar. But the im lav, if it's not strong enough to lift it up, in a chayav lavar, they're considered like two separate pieces. You don't have to get rid of it. Halacha tezayin. Now, what were to happen if you have two halves of a kazais and there isn't even a string of dough connecting them? So that's the scenario. Ba'medavar ma'murim. When did this apply? But I'm sorry. Ba'medavar ma'murim. When does this apply? By areva in a kneading bowl. Avol ba'bais, but in a home. Av al pi she'im yinat alachut. Even if a person were to lift up the string that's connecting two half of his eyes, it wouldn't lift them up with it. Still, in a home or strict, or high of the bar, you still need to destroy it. In a home, there are times when you're going to sweep together different parts of the chametz in your home, different uh, diff- these, these two half of a zesim, and therefore, even if there's nothing connecting them, we do consider it um, as if they're together. I'm sorry, not that... It, not if there's nothing together. This scenario was that there was dough connecting them, it's just that the dough, the string wasn't strong enough to lift them both up. We do consider it combined. But if there's no dough, but if I have a eyes bias, a chazi's eyes if you have a kazais in the first four and a half a kazais in the second four, or chazi's eyes by bias, chazi's eyes by sadro, or chazi's eyes by bias, and chazi's eyes by bias from the in the inner home, hoil of elu a chazoi zeis in the book of Makisalam. Since these two halves are connected with a wall, or with beams, or with the floor, still, you're not required to destroy it. It's enough to nullify it in your heart because there's nothing connecting these two. Do you have a in the house? Can leave it? If you see. A half a kazais in your home, then you're locked to leave it. Very good. You're not dis- you're not obligated to destroy it. It's enough to I would say chametz in the mashu. You're talking about achila. 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 Right. 
the whole reason of aha, so you're talking about the mitzvah of Tashvisu. Talking about this Tashvisu, yes. Right. Normally you're worried about you might come to eat it on Pesach. Like that's the that's the concern. Are we worried that you're going to come to eat a half a kazais, a half of an ounce? For sure, the rabbis are saying when you do Badika's comments, check in the holes, check everything. You're not just checking for full kazaises, right? You're looking for less than kazais things and you're going to move the it all together and get rid of it. Right. That. It, it, but it, I think David raises a very interesting point. Like, I'm talking about the kazais size of this and that. End of the day, on. on Exactly, we know that the Israel is the Mashi, right? Right. So, why? What's this whole focus on the the shear of the Kazayas? And it seems that even less. Because they yeah. about to believe about the Yerik, right? <laughs> Do it in your heart. In other words, the rice. I mean, they, we're already talking to if you did a full patika, and now you're like, oh, I found something left over. You already like did a full patika. Now the question is, do you need to be worried if Rosh should go back because of this thing that you left over? So then it's less like it's nice. You say, okay, I was already able to think I already did the bot, I already did bittle. Are you required to check and find the crumbs? No, crumbs is not considered comments. Why not? It's mashu. Huh? Why not? It's your mashu. Yeah, Purun are, 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 are not considered comments. Sure right. Purun is because I think it's because it's it's already bottle. Right. It's re- okay. I'm not sure. Halakha Yudzai. Now we're gonna speak about someone renting a home. Question is, whose responsibility is it to check? And it depends at what point did the person rent the house? If someone rents out a house, someone like uh, someone is going away for Pesach and they rent the house on the 14th, you can, it's under the presumption that this home is already checked. And the person who's renting it doesn't even doesn't need to search the home. But the im huchzak ze amaski shloi badak. Furthermore, even if we must assume that the person who rented out the house did not search it, but then Amra isha ikatan ano bedaknu. But then a woman or a child said, "Well, we checked it." Hare elu nemanim. They are believed. Shakul nemanim al biur chametz. Everyone is believed to destroy. Uh, everyone is believed on the destruction of chametz if they said that they got rid of it. And Vakil Ksher and Libidiko, everyone is kosher to check it. Vakilu Nashim, Vavadam, Ukhtanim, even women and servants and children. Vahushi, Yakat and Sheshme Das Libdik, as long as he's a child that's old enough that has Das to check. So the presumption when you rent is that it was already checked. And even if we know that in this scenario wasn't checked, if a, a, a Katan or an Isha said, we checked that we believe it. Allah Yiches, Hamaskir, Bias Lachaver, if someone rents a home to his friend, and the rental actually happened, but the keys weren't given over yet. So, if before the owner gave over the keys, it, it now the, it already became the 14th. So then, the the one who owns the home is the one who has to check. So if he already gave over the keys, now it's the 14th. It's on the renter to check. If someone rents a house with the presumption that it was already checked, and then he goes there and he finds that it's not checked, it's not considered a mekachtos. It's ala soicher livdeik. The renter is required to check. Ve'ino mekachtos. It's not a mistaken sale. Ba'filu b'markim shabaitkim b'sachar. Even in a place where, we're, in order to check, we have to hire someone because shaharei mitzvah who oisa the renter is doing a mitzvah b'dikas hametz. And we always say that when a person is given the opportunity to do a mitzvah, we're not going to consider that to be a burden for us to now say that the original renting was a mistake. Halacha yud tes. Now we're going to speak about a person traveling from his home before Pesach. Does he need to do bedikas chametz before he leaves? So I'm farish bayam. Someone who's going to go in the ocean. Someone who's going in a caravan. If it's within 30 days to Pesach. So already then the chiyuv of bedikas chaos then saguk liftak he's required to check. But kaidim shloshim if he leaves before thirty days im taiti lachs or kaidim up pesach if he intends to come back to his home before pesach so then zarech liftak va'achar kach yitzach even now before thirty days he needs to check and only then can he leave why because shema yachs or erev pesach bein hashmoshes maybe he's going to come back right before pesach bein hashmoshes lo yelak nalavari he won't have time to get rid of his chametz. 
So then we require him to check and destroy before he leaves. But the im in daite or if he's leaving before 30 days and he doesn't intend on coming back, then er tzarech livdoik, he doesn't need to check and bitul is enough to get rid of his chametz. And so to what applies to chena, oisa beisot yisrof, someone is making his house into a storehouse, if it's toich shleishim yoyim, if it's within 30 days to pay sach, zach with livdoik, he has to check. And then achar kach chena yisrof, tzarech livdoik, then he can enter in his items to make it into a storehouse. But if it's koinim shleishim yoyim before 30 days, if he has intention to clear out the storehouse again before Pesach, he has to check. And then only then can he make it into a storehouse. But if he doesn't plan on clearing out the storehouse before Pesach and it's before 30 days, he doesn't need to check for Chamas. Uh, All right. Perak Shlishi, third Perak. We're going to talk about Bir Chametz, 11 Halachos, starting with Halacha Aleph. Kishabodik Adam. When a person is checking the Machapes Badele Arba Asar and he's looking in the, at the night of the 14th, Motsi is a Chametz Menachorim, Umena Machavos, Umena Zovios. He takes the Chametz out of the holes and the corners and the hiding places. Umakabit Hakol, and he brings it all together. Umanichu Makom Echad, and he puts it in one place. Atchila Shah Shishis Bayom Umavaro, until the beginning of the sixth hour. And burns it, and like we spoke about yesterday, what that means is before the sixth hour starts. But if he wants to go ahead and burn it in the night of the 14th, he can do it. But then, of course, what he's doing is that he's not leaving himself enough for breakfast, right? The idea is that you're going to be mavar at the end of your use of the chametz. So that's why the, the recommendation is to save it for the morning, so that way you can eat in the morning chametz before the zman. Allah base. The sixth hour means if it was from six to six. It was from six to six. Yeah. Before the sixth hour. Before six to six. Yeah. 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 Before six to do not leave it spread out all over the place. Hide it in a, in a vessel or in a corner, which is known to you. Be very careful because, of course, like we spoke out in the last puzzle, like a lot of things could happen that will make you have to go back and recheck. And if you find that and you come back and wait a minute, not all the comments that are left here is still here. You're going to have to go look for it and potentially have to check again. Maybe what happened was it was taken away by the mice. Oh, so what happens if the 14th day falls on a Shabbos? Now you got a problem. What's the problem? The problem is that we said the Batikas Chametz is right up against the beginning of the Zman of making the Karban. And here, the day of the Karban is not, not until Shabbos afternoon. And you can't burn chametz on Shabbos. So what do you do? So both going to say chametz with the air of Shabbos. You check for chametz on Thursday night, which is the night of the 13th. So you leave enough food to eat for yourself for all day on Friday and for Friday night and for Shabbos morning. Like the Rabbi just said, the rest of it you burn before Shabbos, and please correct me if I'm wrong, and I believe that we have a minog to do that burning on Friday before 11 a.m. as as like a zecher to the way we do it yes, when it's not yes. Shabbos. Yeah. The Ramam does not mention that. The Ramam says, if it's Shabbos or Pesach, you burn the chametz before Shabbos, period. So what happens if it's Shabbos and it's after the fourth hour and you finished all your suda and you still have some chametz left? Mavatlo, you can be mavatlo. The chovel of kli, you turn a, a vessel over it. Ad botzi yom tov arishon, and then umavara, and then you can go ahead and burn it. Because again, you can't burn it on Shabbos. I guess you, burn a cholmoid. Burn a cholmoid. I guess you can't burn it on yantiv either. Why can't you burn it on yantiv as opposed to cholmoid? Is it muksa? Is it muksa? Maybe it's muksa. You can you can you can transfer a flame. Not for the sake of eating. It's not about chametz because either way, chalmoy is the same problem. But fire is only for the sake of eating. That's not eating. Fire is only for the sake of eating on yantiv. Actually, it's a late point. Fire for eating. Fire for eating. Oh. To warm up uh, your house. 
So maybe it's muksa. So in other words, there's literally no use for this chametz on yantiv. You can't touch it. You can't get rid of it. So right, we want to be open. It's not lawful You don't need it. You see why it's muksa, or you can't burn. Why you wouldn't be able to burn it? Why it's muksa? Yeah. Oh, so okay. So for whatever reason, for yantiv, you say we don't touch our yantiv. Cover it. Leave it. Chomoy comes. Take it out and burn it. You have a lot of kikaros of truma. And you have to burn it before Shabbos. Do not combine your tahar truma with your tummy truma and burn it. In other words, we don't say, well, look, all of this is going to be burned. I don't care if my tahar truma becomes tame as it's getting thrown to the fire because ultimately it's all getting burned. No, we are careful about that and you have to burn them separately. You burn your tummy truma by itself and your tahar truma by itself and your truma that you're not sure if it was tummy or tahar it is by itself also. It's because of the kedusha of the... Because of the kedusha of the truma, correct. The tahar truma. The tahar truma. Yeah. And even as far as the tuluya... If the tummy truma touches the, the, the tahar truma, it'll make it tummy? Is that, is that what we're saying Yeah. Here? Yeah, okay. Something like that. And of course, if you want to leave over, you can leave over for yourself the amount that you're going to need to eat until the end of this manachila, which is the fourth hour of the day, 10 a.m. on Shabbos morning. You forgot or you intentionally went over the time and you didn't check on the night of the 14th. Check the 14th in the morning. You didn't check it 8 a.m., Check at 10.30. Check at 11 a.m. Lo bodak v'sha'a sabir. Bodak v'sha'a chag. You got to check even on yantiv. Of, meaning on cholmoid. Over a rega of the yantiv, the whole yantiv passing for lo bodak. You still didn't check. You're not going to be able to use a nair. You're only going to have a limited amount of ability to check during the day, like we throw spoke out in the sadra or in the places that a lot of sun. You could use the sun. Use the sun for certain places. Also, 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 we also learned that the Time is really nighttime. Right. The you're supposed to be checking at night. And the checking at night, you're checking by near. Shouldn't do that on Yantiv. You should do that on Chag means on All right. I do. Now, on Chalmoy, you're still going to have to check after Yantiv. Why? Because Chomit of Pesach has to be located and destroyed still even after Pesach it's Azar Ba'ana and therefore you didn't do Bidika before you're still going to have to do Bidika after Yantiv don't think you're going to get away with it okay Allah Chavav Kishet Bodek HaChametz B'Lele Abbasar O B'Yom Abbasar O B'Toch HaRega when you're when you're looking for Chametz whether it's on the 14th at night whether it's in the 14th in the morning whether it's in the middle of Yantiv Mevarech Chodim Sheyaschil Livdog Baruch Atah Hashem Alokinah Malach Olam Asher Kereshon Mitzvah Tzibano Al Beer chametz or on regarding beer chametz. So what are we doing? So what is everybody talking about here? Whether you're supposed to say levi or chametz or al beer chametz, and ultimately the conclusion is al beer chametz because when you're checking, you're not destroying. And in fact, we dafka have in mind not to be doing the destroying until the end of the zman achila tomorrow morning. And so therefore, we say a more general concerning the beer chametz because this is the beginning of the process. Rather than we know mitzvahs, uh, brachos are supposed to be done over the sun immediately before they do the mitzvah, and here it's not immediately before you do the beer, so you can't say levi or chametz before you start your bedika. So that's why you say al beer chametz. Bodik, you check a mechapes and you look around. Mechal mekom Moshe machnisin lehem chametz. Moshe biarna like we already explained. Being bodik la'achar regal einu mivarech at that point you're not going to be mivarech because all you're doing is you're accomplishing the rabbinic knas of chametz shelo pesach. There's no reason to be making a bracha on that. When you finish being doing the bedika in Badak or or Kodem Sheish Shaos before the sixth hour, if you finish when you finish your, your bedika, Tzarech Levatel, Kol Chametz Shenisha Bereshuso Ve'Ina Ro'ehu. You have to be Mavatel any Chametz that might be left in your house that you didn't find. The Yomer, you say Kol Chametz Sheish Bereshusi Shalora Isiv. Any Chametz that I was in my Rishus that I didn't see, Arehu Batel. Behold, it is bottle, it is is like nothing. It's like dirt. But if it's after the sixth hour and you're checking, meaning to say after chatzos, 
You can no longer be mevatel. So it's considered not in your shus because the halacha is that things are that you are not usher that are usher bahana. You're not allowed bahana from are basically considered ownerless. And if they're ownerless, it's not halachically considered in your shus. They, they, they compare this to only other scenario that's like this. You know that you're still responsible for it, but it's considered not in your shus. It's like a bar bishus rabim. If you dig a bar bishus rabim, it's not in your shus, but you're still a cry for something that happens to it. Similarly, so here because it's aser bahana, it, 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 it develops. It becomes the status of not even in your shus, and you can't just say you can't just rely on bittel believe. You actually have to go and find it and destroy it, as, as I believe he's about to explain. That you had your das on that and you found some comics later. And it was in your heart. You forgot it at the time that you were, you were doing your beer. You, you weren't with it and it's left and you found it later. You were over the love, the rice of Valiroy and Valiroy. Until after the time that it was not allowed. The ain habitil ata moilo klum shaharit lafisha ina birishuso. But now, if you're going to try to go me mavatil it, you can no longer rely on bitil. Why? Because lafisha ina birishuso. But hakasov also kilo hu birishuso lachayvo mishum leroy lo yamatzah. So it's it's in your shus as far as that you're chayav for ba yira ba yamatzah, but it's not your shus so far as you're not able to be mavatil it. Correct. You have to go. You have to actually destroy it anytime that you find it. And if you found if you find it on Yantov, like we said before, you turn a plea over onto it, you cover it up at the Arif, at the Arif until it's till Yantiv is over. And and then you can burn it the night after Yantiv ends, beginning of Cholmoy. The Im shall hekishu, and if it's if it's Kodesh, Eino Tzarek Lichvos Alav Kli, shall call partially Mimeno. So if it's not if it's hect- if it's not hectish, then we're worried that somebody's going to find it and eat it. Since we're worried that somebody's going to find it and eat it, you have to cover a clue over it as this to designate it. Don't know nobody come near this. But if it's hectish and everybody already knows the things that are hectish, I'm not going to touch for whatever reason. I'm not going to be eating them. So therefore, you don't have to go that extra step of covering a clue over it. It already has the hectish label on it. It says right there on the tag. So if it says it right there on the label hectish, then you don't have to take another step to make sure that somebody doesn't go ahead and eat it. Halacha test. Me she yatsa we basic call them shasa beer. Somebody who left his house before the shasa beer. Last was mitzvah. So there's going to be three different types of people leaving their house. We're going to speak about the middle one first. The middle one is you left your house to do a mitzvah. Oh, lechol sudas shal mitzvah. You go on sudas irisin or nisuin. I don't know who's making a sudas irisin nisuin on Arab Pesach in the morning, but fine. You went to go do that. You went to go do a mitzvah. Venizka she yish lo chametz mitzvah beso, and you you realize you had some chametz back in your house. If you're able to leave the, the, the wedding hall, go back to your house, do your beer, go back to the wedding and still make it for the mitzvah, then you should go do that. Yes, sir. In love, you're about to believe, if not, you should stay at the wedding hall. Do not leave your osik mitzvah. Go and you're good enough. Like we said before, she just ram is the right. So all you have to do is be your bitzel believer. Yatsa the hatzil, so let's go even even stricter. Yatsa the hatzil, miyad hagayis, mina nohar, mina deleka, mina lavole. So you're going for sakanas the fushes. You're going to because there's an army, because there's a river, because there's a fire, because there's a, a building falling down. If there's scenarios that are that are even more serious that require your involvement more than being at a sudas mitzvah, don't make cheshbonos. Can I go back? Can I make it back before the building falls? Before the fire reaches this? No, 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 no. Yevatel believe over daya. You guys, all you do is do bittel. You're in a more serious scenario. You're needed over there. Don't even think about your beer chametz. Be about to believe and stay where you are and, and help out. Yato the tarech atzmo. However, the, the third case, which is would be the, 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 the most lenient case, right? All you're doing is the tarech atzmo. You're going for your own shpitzir. So now v'nizka sheish the chametz b'zok beitzo yachzer miyad. You have to go back right away and do your beer, and you're not able to simply stay where you are and rely on the bittel. The ad kama hochos there, and so how, for how much chametz you need to go back? Ad kabeitza, but haya pachos mi kabeitza. I'm about to believe over dayo. So says the Rambam. Even though the shear, like we said before, was a kazayis, but if you're not there and you know you're able to do bittul, so then from a kazayis 
So Kibetza, it's okay to rely lechatchila on Bidl, even if you were on your own Shpitzir. Halacha Yud. Mishanyech Isa Vigolgolis Mitzok Beso. Somebody who left a, a, a loaf in his house. Yatza and he left. Vinizkar Acha Shiyatza and he remembered after he le- after he left that he le- that he forgot about that. Rabo and he's sitting in front of his Rebbe Vaya Yare Shema Tachmitz and he's oh so excuse me. So he so he he put together a dough. He made a dough and he left it in his way. And then he's afraid now that uh, before he's able to get back, it's gonna rise and it's gonna become chametz. Vaya Yare. So we see it sounds like the Rabam Shir is not the 18 minutes that we have because it's hard to imagine. That it's not going to rise in the 18 minutes. But anyway. Why is that not the scenario? He went to the Shia for 18 minutes. I mean, 540, he lives Mamash a block and a half away. 543. Okay. All right. I guess you can you can squeeze down the times into just a simple minutes and find it can work even with an Arch with our Shia for 18 minutes. You can have a scenario where he's out and he's realizing, oh my gosh. I'm not going to be able to get back in time. The, the, <laughs> right, and then all of a sudden, it's one of those really long ones, and he realizes, wait a minute, I'm not going to be able to get back before my 18 minutes. Exactly. So what does he do? Shema <laughs> Before it, it turns into it turns into chametz. But once, so, so in other words, before it actually turns into chametz, it's still considered in your rishos. You have the ability to mevatle. All you can do, you can you can be mevatle, and you're good. But once it turns into chametz, like we said before, it's left your shus. You no longer are capable of being a vatalit, and you're going to have to destroy it. So you are over the lab of not having it. So you are over the lab of So you are over the lab of not having it. So you are over the lab of not having it. So you are over the lab of not having it. So you are over the right away, and it. is not going to help you at all. So you are over the lab of not it. So you are over the lab of not having it. So you are over the lab it. So you are over the lab of you crumble it. up. And throw it into the wind. Oh, Zorkol Yam, or you throw it into the river. And the reason why it works to just throw it into the sea without crumbling it is because usually things that you go into the water immediately they disintegrate. But if it's something that's hard, like this, like an old loaf of bread, and it's not going to disintegrate in the yam, so then you do mafarov zorkol yam. First, break it up and then throw it into the yam. Chametz shenafa alav mapoles. If a, if a, a, a structure fell on the chametz, and it's covered by three tzvachim or yoser or more of, of dirt, of, of rubble, of whatever it may be, that's considered like it's burned. And all you have to do is even vatal in your heart. You don't have to go and search, dig for it and destroy. And I guess we would say that even if it was one of the scenarios where you had to move In other words, you couldn't just rely on the bittel because it was after this man, and, and, and you weren't able to bottle it, right? And so we say you can't do the bits on it itself, but if it falls and it's under three tfacham or more of rubble, then you can just be bottle it. Thank you. So I was, I stand corrected. That's only if the, if this man hasn't passed. But you can't ever do bittel after this. this after you can't do the bittel. So, so, so in other so words, it's considered case, burnt. Start uh, digging out the, the, the building. So why the don't? So why do you have to do that? If he says that it, if if it's covered, that's kimavor. It's just like you have something in a pit in your yard. So you just what do you call it? So you still have to be the bittel. It's not. In other words, it's not considered like it's burned such that you're good. You still right. have to be the bittel. Still in existence. It's still in existence. It's just, mm-hmm. You still should do the bittel. Okay, fine. No, so the akam kolim shal shishis. If you gave it to a guy before the sixth hour, in a circle of fire, then you don't have to burn it. So let's say you burned it before the sixth hour. You can use the coals, even even on Yantiv itself. And we're not going to say that the chametz kite transferred to the coals. No, the chametz was burned. It's nothing, no chametz left. What you have left is totally mutter to use on Yantiv. But if you burned it after the sixth hour, hold who also bahanaya, right? Instead of once this man passed, it becomes Asarana. So now I raise a Yasik Votan or Vikirayim. You can't use it to feed your oven. Lo Yafabo, you can't cook it. Lo Yavashabo, you can't use it to cook. You can't have any hana from it at all, even from the cold. The in bishal o offa also ha pas, but also a tavshil ozerbanaya. And it goes so far as that if you use that coal and you cooked with it or you baked with it, that pas, whatever you made, is also Azerbana. And also, it's coals usher and bahana. They're also usher and themselves. Hold the sorful achash and usher bahania because they were burnt. The chametz was around after the zman, and that makes them usher bahana 
completely. Right. Yeah. The distinction is when they become the charcoal. If it became charcoal before the sixth hour, then you can actually use it on Pesach and have enough of it. At that point, it's not so the comments were gone. Where is it was still comments into the sixth hour or, or whatever past the sixth hour, and at that point, you're done. No matter how, how much you burn out, or how you can't have any They still also run. Okay. Right. Okay. Push ups. 20 minutes. Freilach. Freilach. There we go. Perk Dalid. Halachas uh, of Chametz Matzah. There we go. Halacha Aleph. Chasu Betara Lo Yirei Lo Lacha Chametz. It says in the Torah, No Chametz shall be seen for you. Let Yachol Im Taman Oisa Or Hifkir Hifkid Oisa Biad Goim. You would think if you were going to bury it or give it to a goy Lo Yei Oiver, then you wouldn't be transgressing this. Taman Lo Yimar So Or Lo Yimatzi Batechem. We come out to learn that it says. Chamed should not be found in your home. Even if you buried it or you entrusted it to a goy. You would think that you would only transgress when the chamed is in the person's house. However, if it is far from the person's house, in the field or in another city, lo ye over, then maybe you wouldn't be over on Hamichamitz Tamulama Bechol Gulecha in all of your territory, Bechol Rishusoy, and anything that is in your Rishus, Yachol Ye, Chayab Levar, Mirshusoy, Hamitz, Shalgoy, or Shal Hektesh. You would think you were Hamitz. Um, uh, it, if it to if it belonged to Goy or that it was Hektesh, if it was consecrated, Tamulama Lo Yirai Lecha. It should not be seen for you. It's yours. You may see it on your own. However, you can see chametz uh, that's belonging to somebody else or hektesh. Okay. Huh? I don't know. So it's not talking about truma. Truma, we said the four hefty first. This is talking about Hektish. All right. Yeah. Okay. Allah Chabes. We come out to learn Shechamit Shal Yisrael, Chamit that is a Jews, Im Himi Chabir Shusoy, if it's in his possession, Afilu Tamun Bafilu Beir Acheres, even if it's hidden, or if it is located in another city, Bafilu Mufkad Yad Goim, or if you entrusted it to Agoy Harize, or even Mishum Lo Yirayev Lo Yimatse. You have been uh, transgressing over. The Loira Vilayamatse. Okay, the Hamid shall Hektish or shall Goish Aya Etzel Yisrael. How about Hamids of Hektish or from a Goy who is being entrusted to a Jew, a Filo Haya Ima Babais? Even this Hamid that's in his own house, or is a Mutar, Mipnesha in his Shaloi. This is allowed to be there because it's not his Hamids, it's that's not his property. Do. That's what we do. We all have cabinets that belong to the Goy, but it's in our house. Correct. Okay. Or if, also, if you go to a hotel, you have a, the, the mini bar with all the... It's not yours. It doesn't belong to you. It belongs to the hotel. It's the right. guys. The filu haya shall ger shiyad yisrael shall let us alone. How about a ger toishav? What's a ger toishav? That's called a resident alien. A resident alien means he's a goy who has chosen to take on the shevim mitzvah b'nei noyach, and therefore we allow him to live in Eretz Yisrael. Ein koifin oisul ha'hoiti ha'chamitz b'rishu seinu v'pesach. Then we are not... We do not need to force him to remove the chamit from his property on Pesach. Aval, sarech lasso is mechitza gavoya asart fachim ifnei chametz shel goy. You do need to make a mechitza of ten fachim or higher in order to separate between what is yours and what is the goy's. Why? Shami avoli histapik mimenu. Maybe you're going to come to use that chametz and get mixed up. This is the goy's chametz. This is my my chametz. Okay. Aval shall hektish, however, if it's hektish, it's not of the goy's chametz. In you do not have to put a mechitza of tent fachim. Mitnesha kol pershin minha hektish. Everybody is careful from hektish. It has, like uh, Shuki says, it has this label of hektish on it. It has to have like some sort of sign. No, uh, how else would you know? Huh? Yeah, put a different key on it. Or put a on it or something. Or they, they wrote a hay on it or something yeah. like that, right? 
Got it. Okay. Kedei shelo yavoy leidei meila. In order, why are you careful of this? So you shouldn't come to meila. What is meila? That you take something that is hectish and you use it for something that is not hectish. Then it becomes what's called misappropriated. Then you cannot use it for hectish anymore. We don't want to come to doing that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Halacha gimel. Goy etzal Israel. What about a goy who entrusts his Chametz by a Jew. Im kibel, abba, im kibel, Allah, Yisrael, if the Jew is accepting the responsibility for this chametz upon himself, shim avad or nignav, yishalom loy damav, if he loses it or it gets stolen, he's going to have to pay back. This type of chametz he has to burn. Hoyel the kibel alav achrayus. Since he accepted upon himself the responsibility, it's as if it is it is the Jews. If he didn't take upon himself responsibility for this chametz that the guy gave him, it's possible to remain by him. And he's able to eat from it after Pesach. Who, because it was not his, it was the guy's, and he's able to. It doesn't matter. He's stealing, but at least it didn't belong to him. <laughs> right, right. Halacha Dalit. Goy anas v'hifkir hifkid chametzo What about what about a goy who comes? He forces himself that this Jew has to take responsibility for the chametz. Im yodesh Yisrael im avad or nignav mechayvel shalmoi. If the Jew himself knows that if he loses it or if it's going to get stolen, he is going to be responsible to pay for it. But kofi yivo into the shalom and he's going to be forced. To pay back, even though he did not accept responsibility for it, he needs to burn this chametz. Because it's as if, as if it is his chametz. Because the goy is holding him responsible for okay. whether he likes it or not. Very good. Yeah. Hey, this is a fun one. A Jew who get, takes a loan from a goy, and then he gives as a security for the loan, he gives chametz. If I don't come and pay you back on this and this date, retroactively, you can be koina, you can be acquiring this yeah. Chametz from now, that's retroactively. Yeah. Therefore, the chametz is in the reshus of the goy. Yeah. This chametz that you sold to the goy, that originally was a so loan. Gave him as a hold on, hold on, one sec. Is able to be eaten after Pesach. Okay. This only applies. If when you made this condition that I'm giving you this security and I'm going to pay you back by this in this state, and if I didn't pay you back by this in this state, then it's yours. That's only if you made the date up up till uh, uh, the sixth hour of the uh, Pesach on the 14th of Nisan. Okay. If you didn't make this stipulation, that you're going to retroactively, retroactively acquire it. Nimsa oisa chametz kiilo hu pikadoin etzalagoy. Then this chametz is going to be considered not just as a security, but it's called a pikadoin, which is only considered like a collateral. But also ba'anayin la'achar pesach, and you're also to take benefit from this chametz on pesach. Let's explain this for a second. Even after. Huh? So it's as if it would remain if, in your possession. If, if it remains, you do not, the whole point is that you do not want it to remain in, in, remain in your possession. So a person might think, what is the point of saying up until this date before the sixth hour of Pesach, I, I'm not affecting anything. So the way I understand that I, I asked about this is that the person wants to sell his chametz. So he makes this whole thing where he's taking a loan and he says, here's the chametz. He's going to let the time pass so that it passes, he did not pay it back. Now the chametz is the goy's. It's no longer yours. Since it's the goy's and it's not in your reshus, and you didn't take benefit, benefit from it on Pesach, then after Pesach, you, you can take benefit of it. However, if you didn't make that stipulation from this and this time, which happened to be before Pesach, then it's, a, it's only considered a collateral. And if the, the goy is thinking, oh, I'm going to get paid for it after Pesach, 
then whose reshus is this chametz? It's in the reshus of a Jew still. The, the goy is just thinking, I'm still going to get paid back. I'm going to get paid back after, chametz, after Pesach. Therefore, it's called Pesach that you had benefit from during Pesach, and you're not able to eat from it. By the way, just uh, as a note, the Ravid disagrees with this, and the Shulchan Aruch disagrees with this. Okay. Halacha Vav. Okay. Yes. Halacha Vav. Yisrael the goy shayu bayin besfina. Okay, a Jew and a Goy, they come on a ship. The Chametz was in the hand of the Israel. Comes the fifth hour on the 14th of Nisan. You either sell it to the Goy or you're going to give to the Goy as a gift. Then you can return and you can take it from him after Pesach. Buy back from him. Buy back from him, yeah. As long as when he gives it to him as a gift, he gives it to him as a complete gift, no conditions. By the way, if you connect this to the halacha before, then the way the Rambam was thinking that you do this whole shtick with the loan, you probably are making up that you're going to buy it back from him after, and that's how you're able to eat it, as opposed to eating a goy's chametz after Pesach that you do not own anymore, that would be called stealing. So maybe you make this stipulation with the intention and the whatever not a condition but you have the intention that you buy it back you come back and then he gives him back his money correct right so right. at that point you're going right. to do, basically he's buying it back by the way i asked if this is the way that we do our sale on like these days and and, and rabbi ledhar said we do exactly the opposite we actually make a condition that if we don't buy it back then then he doesn't buy it back. if he doesn't buy it, buys it up front correct? right okay halacha zayn so a Jew tells the guy, he says, rather than buying a man's worth of chametz, come and buy 200 dinners worth of chametz, which is a lot more. Rather than buying it from a guy, come and buy it from me, from a Jew. That perhaps I'm going to need this chametz and maybe I'm going to buy it from you after Pesach. However, you cannot give the chametz to him with a condition, with a tanai, that I'm going to buy it back from you after, because then it's not going to be really considered the goy's chametz, and therefore you wouldn't be able to take benefit from it after Pesach. If you did that, if you did this, then you're over on the love. Halacha ches. You have a mixture of chametz. This is also considered that you are over on the on the love of um, having leaven seen or having leaven found. Okay. Whether it is the muryas, which is pickle brine, or it's the kutach, which is this. Uh, what is it? Bread. Bread. Moldy bread. Moldy bread. Moldy bread. Moldy bread. Sour Persian milk. Love Persian love it. Mixture. Or you have beer. You have Midian beer. Okay. Which are all of these things are made from kemach. They're all made from flour. All of these are similar substances that can be eaten. That's the main thing. However, if you have something that has a mixture of chametz, and it's not something that you can eat, for example, lipstick, you're allowed to keep it on Pesach. Uh, lipstick, you can't use it, but you can have it in the house. And maybe you don't have to get rid of it. You're not allowed to put it on your lips. Got it. Okay. Halacha test. Ketzad. How about if you take a tanner, a person who is working with leather, and he puts in the tanner's trough, he places the animal hide, and with it, he places into it flour. If you do this and you place it away uh, just a moment before beer chametz, this you're allowed to keep. You don't have to destroy it. If he doesn't place the flower, no, sorry. If he doesn't place the skins, skins okay, along with the flower, the flower goes into the trough and it gets ruined. Right? This is wait, wait, wait we're gonna get there. 
but but here you're doing it and that's i guess the process of working the the, uh -huh, the, the, yeah. the hide you place it together so you place it in the trough you leave it you don't you don't have to worry about it it's, it's flour it's not it's it's flour it's hummus it's hummus. It's, hummus. it's the other water okay but we're, we're talking about flour oh uh, it's flour okay okay okay, okay. Really? but not okay if you in this in this trough you did not place the skins, and you're gonna place this kemach, this flour, three days before the time of doing doing beer chametz mutar. Why is it mutar? Because this kemach is gonna become completely rotten. You're not gonna use it, and it's not gonna become chametz. However, if you did it within three days. And it's possible that it's not going to become spoiled, and it's possible that you can use it to make it chametz. Then you have to burn it. Hold on. Let's so just clarify the distinction the Rambam is making, just so I, I think it, it's because it, just so it should be clear. The first part of the halacha, he says, if you put the flour with the hide, even if it's one hour before the shab, the, the the time of what do you call? You're fine with the hide. You're fine with the flour because it's considered like it's ruined. The second part is saying that if you put the flour in the truck without the hides. Right, so the high is doing some sort of uh, spoiling of it's the fast, flour, which fattening the process. It's making, it, it's making it not in a state of being edible. So right. therefore, I think that's what he's saying. So therefore, even three days, if it's sat for three days, then you consider that the flour is it's not really it's not really achila. Right, exactly. Allah yud. The can But if it's less than three days and there's no high, it's, then you have to it's be really achila. It's really right. achila. Okay, okay. okay. good. Whether it's an eye salve or a compress or a plaster ointment or tariak, which they use in Iran, you have to mix these things with chametz. You're allowed to use these and keep these. You made you laugh? You're allowed to keep these for, huh? Tariaki. <laughs> The, you're allowed to use these for Pesach Sharein Nifsadat Suras Achametz because the Chametz is no longer um, uh, you cannot see it as spoiled. The Chametz, you're not something. It's not something really lachila. Halachi Yudalaf. Hapas Hapas Atzmo She Ipsha Benifsala Melechol Hakelev. If you have bread that became moldy and you're no longer going to give it even to a dog, Umelugma Shenistracha in a Sarech Levar or a compress. That became spoiled. You're not gonna. You do not have to do beer chametz on it. But next halacha, begadim shekipsu oisan bechelav chita, clothes which were washed with starch. Chen niyarois shedipku oisan bechametz. So to papers that you use to stick together with chametz like glue. Chen kol kiyutz bezen. Anything similar to this. Muter lekaim bepesach. You're allowed to keep it for pesach. The ain by him is shum lo yirai v'lo yimatzei. You don't have to be worried about the over of lo yirai v'lo yimatzei. She ain't suras a chametz or medus because you do not see the chametz. It doesn't have a form of chametz. Halacha yud base. The last halacha. Davar shin is arav boy chametz ve'inon ma'achal adam klal. Something that is a mixture of 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 chametz. However, it is not eaten by humans. Or it's something that is uh, not generally eaten like this tariyak. Even though you're allowed to keep it back to the, the lipstick. You cannot eat it until after Pesach. So this tariyak, even though you're not having to burn it, you can put it away in a cabinet, but you're not allowed to eat it. You're not allowed to put the lipstick on. The af al pi she'ain boy mina chametz ela kol shehu. Even though it doesn't have, it only has the slightest amount of chametz. Harizet isur la'achloi. This is usur for eating. Just so I understand, it sounds like in the last two halachos or last three. There's the suras hachametz, which is not there, but it's still chametz. Yes. So that's why you can't eat it. You can't eat it, but you right. can keep it. As opposed to like, for Daniel, you say, well, I love the test. It's no longer comments, it gets ruined. And then right. those are the things that were Tarubos, comments when it was over, that we were going to do the beginning today or yesterday. Yeah. That those you have to get rid of. Even the closest one, the big Tarubos. Right. By the way, if you look at that, note line. number seven, it makes this distinction between what? Straight after all four. Is is not Roy Lachilas Adam. And when you say it's not Roy Lachilas Kelam, there's a difference. 
between when you say it has to be not even Roy Lachidus Kelev versus when you say it's not Roy Lachidus Adam. I'm not sure exactly. But even at the end, the why is the last line that says, also the So you can't use the words. We're talking about the could theoretically be eating, you know, it's maybe not. Yeah, you say no one eats lipstick, right? So therefore, but it has chametz. You don't use it on what it does. After Pesach, would you have to put that lipstick on your mouth if some of it is going to be consumed? I don't know. After it sounds like this last halacha that says it, it, you wouldn't be allowed to. No, because after it, it, it's if, not considered homage of a lava If this tariyak is a medicine and the medicine has a mixture of mashu, right? Mashu chametz. Yeah. Mashu chametz. And you're not, it's not something that you eat. It's not really la chila. Okay. Don't use it for, 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 for health purposes either because it has. It, any health purposes. That's what tariyak. Yeah, that's what tariyak is. It's like a What's medicine. Eating? Huh? Why is it the end? It says, the la akhla. Who would be eating this? You might take it as like a medicine. You might take it as medicine. Yeah. But it's not right. ruila khila. Right. It's not eating. Okay.